Hello, and welcome to Macaulay Live, the online event that rolls out the red carpet for you, our newest group of accepted students. My name is Daniel Allen, and I will be your host for this event. I graduated from Macaulay at Hunter College in 2008 with a degree in Media Studies in Chinese. I now work in New York City as a video producer, and I've previously served as the president of the Macaulay Alumni Network. We're coming to you now from the reading room of our brownstone on West 67th Street in Manhattan. I'd like to begin by congratulating you on your acceptance to Macaulay. At Macaulay, you will be joining a very selective, high-achieving, and unique group of people. I remember at my small high school, we had a guest speaker come to our social studies class. She was there to tell us about a new honors program at the City University of New York. The Honors College provided a free tuition, a laptop, an opportunities fund for study abroad, a cultural passport to the best that NYC has to offer. That was it. I was sold. I applied to just two other schools because I knew that Macaulay was right for me. And it was the best decision I've made. I owe my education, my career, my financial freedom, and my family to Macaulay. I met my wife at a Macaulay event, and six months ago, we welcomed our baby Goldie into the world. But it's just not that easy for everyone. Macaulay has so many great perks, but when you've been accepted to several top-tier schools, as I'm sure you have, there are so many things to consider. Where will I live? What classes will I take? What food do they serve in the cafeteria? Will I make friends and enjoy my life on campus? In today's presentation, you're going to hear from a group of students and alumni. And I think you'll be hearing a few words come up over and over again that you may not hear about other schools. Words like academically challenging, mentorship, personalized, leadership, innovative, supportive, and most important of all, community. The students in the Macaulay community have become Fulbright Scholars, Rhodes Scholars. Our graduates work in business, journalism, and government at companies like Ernst & Young, the New York Times, Morgan Stanley, and the U.S. Department of State. They go to top-tier medical schools, Albert Einstein, NYU, and Harvard, and law schools like Stanford, Cornell, and Fordham. We even have alumni with successful acting careers. Here's a photo of my friend James Manzello, who appeared in an MTV hidden camera show called Totally Clueless, and Colby Minifee in an episode of Law & Order. There is no other program you will find that turns New York City into your campus like Macaulay. There's no other college in New York that brings together such a diverse and multi-talented group of students. There's no other college that offers you a debt-free honors education of this caliber. In the next hour or so, you're going to get a lot of information about Macaulay. You'll hear from a group of current students and alumni representing all eight campuses with Macaulay Honors College students. You're also going to hear from Macaulay's administrative leadership about why we think our program stands out. Based on survey results from last year's online event, we've tailored our program to address the areas that accepted students want to hear about most. Academic programs, the New York City seminars and course requirements housing, transportation, and meals, what do Macaulay students do after graduation, study abroad, and the Opportunities Fund, which each Macaulay student receives to use for study abroad, internships, research opportunities, or other academic pursuits. During the webcast, feel free to ask your questions by posting them to our admissions Facebook page, facebook.com slash Macaulay Admissions. We have student ambassadors and alums available to respond to your questions. And at the end of the presentation, we will address the top five FAQs about Macaulay Honors College. So stick around to hear those most frequently asked questions about Macaulay. And with that, I'd like to share a brief welcome message from Ann Kirshner, Dean of the Macaulay Honors College. Hi, I'm Ann Kirshner, Dean of Macaulay Honors College. Welcome. Congratulations. Congratulations to you and also to your family on being admitted to Macaulay. You'll hear about academics, you'll hear about uh, technology. What I really want to tell you about is the life of the students and how this place really revolves around that. You got an idea for a club, you have an idea for a special event, we want to know about it and we want to work with you to make it a reality 
because we know that anything that students initiate is absolutely fantastic. For students like you who may go on to law school, med school, um, or want to roam around the world for a couple of years after, after college, you don't want to be forced into a place because of the debt that your family has taken on. So at Macaulay, this world-class education in partnership with the eight campuses of the City University of New York is yours and belongs to you and your family um, for a value that really is, um, is second to, to none. So congratulations, welcome to Macaulay. Um, we look forward to seeing you at our building on West 67th Street and all around the city of New York. Congratulations. So now I'd like to introduce our first group of student and alumni panelists. In case you don't see someone from the campus you applied to, do not worry. We'll have another group up here in just a few minutes. Corinna Singelman is a Queens native. She earned her BA in biology from Queens College in 2008, where she was captain of the fencing team. She went on to earn an MS in biology from Chatham University, and now she's come back home as a PhD candidate in biology at Queens College. Renisha Pierre is a senior at Lehman College in the Bronx, where she studies social work and sociology. This fall, she will begin a master's program at Hunter's Silberman School of Social Work, and she plans to work with at-risk youth. Drew Podgarski is a freshman at John Jay College, where he currently studies international justice with a minor in Arabic. An active ROTC cadet after graduation, he will be commissioned in the Army as an officer. Hosea Mack is a junior, majoring in chemistry and minoring in Chinese at the College of Staten Island. Hosea works in two laboratories, one that does research on polymers used in consumer electronics, and the other lab tries to solve water treatment issues in developing countries. So thank you all for being here. Corinna, I'll, I'll start with you. Um, we actually graduated the same year in 2008 yes. and one of the things that that we've spoken about before is that Macaulay was such a good option for you because of its affordability so tell us a little bit about that my family came from sort of a middle class lower middle class status I guess and I have three younger siblings my family had a house and they had a lot of bills so being able to go to college as my parents really hoped that I would, but not having to worry about financial aid or student debt after I graduated, like many of my other classmates did, was a really great opportunity that I saw through the Macaulay Honors College. And um, what were you doing? What did you do for housing when you were going to Queens College? I stayed at home. Yeah. And what was that? Um, was that? balance something that you were able to to make work through the years that you were you know it was actually really great I was able to stay at home so I was very involved with my family which was really important to me but because Macaulay at each campus has their own uh, different centers where you can stay and study there's computer access internet access your advisors are right down the hall so if you need to talk to one of the IT apps or one of your uh, other advisors to get some advice or to plan your schedule or if you wanted to form a impromptu study group with some of your classmates so many of your Macaulay classmates are in your other courses that you just can walk down the hall walk to a different room and they're right there and you can get the help you need or study or just hang out and enjoy the time with your classmates and so it was, it was the great the greatest balance I could imagine the last uh, thing I wanted to ask you about is your study abroad experience in Galapagos. Tell me about that, that experience. That was one of the most amazing experiences in my life. I, the happy place I go to whenever any troubles occur is the Galapagos and the beach directly across the street from campus. I think there were 17 or 18 other students who I knew three of them. I became great friends with so many of the others and we had the most amazing experience together, uh, not just educationally but also socially and just being in one of the most pristine, beautiful places in the world was phenomenal. Yeah. So Renisha, let's, let's move on to you. Um, we, we've spoken about this before but if you could just tell us what are the four NYC seminar courses because now, now you've completed all of them, correct? Yes. Um, and tell us how each of those played a role in your education so far. Okay, well the first um, seminar that we took was um, 
arts in New York City. Um, and that's freshman year, first um, semester. And we learned a lot about the cultural institutions that are based in New York City. Um, we went to operas, we went to different shows and plays, and learned about how arts played a role in our lives as New Yorkers and, you know, the different um, art spaces that are built here in New York. Um, the second seminar that we took was Peopling um, in New York City, and we learned about the immigration patterns of New York, how New York came to be, um, the diverse cultural center that it, that it is right now, um, and a lot, and we looked at it through the lens of food in that class as well. So that was really interesting, um, and the students uh, played a big role in bringing in foods of their culture and speaking about that, so um, that was important. So the third seminar that we took was um, Science and Technology in New York. Um, and a lot of the students in the class at Lehman, some of them were science majors, biology, chemistry, anthropology, others were social science, um, and some were neither. So it was really interesting to see how we all um, could just, you know, come to a common space and understanding um, about how science shapes New York City. Um, and the last seminar that we take is policy. It's um, the policy of New York City. Um, and that was, it's good that it's the last seminar because it tends to be the hardest because there's a lot more research and work that goes into that seminar. But it, um, most students would probably say it was the most dynamic as far as the class and um, arguing with people about the policies in New York City and we looked at it through the lens of homelessness. You come to the class not knowing very much about the policy work in New York City and not understanding it, how it shapes your life directly, but we came out understanding how we can um, be instrumental in shaping the policy of New York by crafting one of our own policies, and that's the final research project that we do. And just to dovetail on that, you know, shaping the policy of New York and making a difference, tell us about some of the things that you're doing right now, uh, kind of doing that, that sort of pu public policy advocacy work in New York City right now. Since I was a sophomore in high school, I've been affiliated with um, the Adolescent Education Program based at SUNY Downstate Medical Center. And while there, I've done HIV and pregnancy prevention work. Um, and that entailed going out to classrooms in New York City, um, churches, community centers, all over, and speaking to at-risk youth about HIV and pregnancy prevention. I hope you, you know, wish you a lot of success in doing that kind of work. It's really important stuff. Uh, so, Drew, let's, let's hear from you. Um, you are on John Jay, which is the newest addition to the Macaulay family, if you will. So tell us a little bit about Macaulay life at John Jay and, and sort of what maybe some of the people watching this who are accepted to John Jay might want to know. Right, absolutely. So they got a beautiful new campus over there, and it's it's absolutely amazing building. Everything's pristine and uh, really nice classrooms and everything. Uh, the classes are really great. We have extremely small class sizes. I think the largest class I've probably been in so far is a class of 30 students. Um, so that's been really uh, ama an amazing experience. Um, there's a lot of the honors uh, uh, students there are really high caliber students and there's a lot of cross Macaulay honors program uh, events that we got going on so that helps you really broaden your base of people you get to interact with and we really have a unique uh, unique experience in that our Macaulay class is so small. Uh, right now there's only 20 of us there. Um, so you really have a tight-knit group of friends who you get to go to class together and hang out with outside of class and that really gives you a really an existing base of friends to to partner with and go through the college experience with. And um, how many of the students would you say of that cohort are studying things related to criminal justice system um, majors? Right, I'd say uh, almost everybody. Um, I think there's only, there's, we have one student who's uh, really focused on English, but everybody in some way, their, their majors kind of dovetail towards criminal justice. And I, that's what John Jay really offers uniquely is that all the professors that you'll experience um, have real life experience in the field. Like my, one of, the, um, one of the, my uh, seminar professor uh, from last semester actually works for the NYPD on a regular basis and does consultant work for them. Um, so you really, even, even like the English classes, they all have like a criminal justice twist on them. So you're always, even if when you're not working on something that's specific towards your major, or towards your, uh, your field of interest, it still kind of comes together in the end, which is really neat. Great. Um, that's, I know that that's a major focus of most of the students there. And, and, um, you know, to, to that, we have been lucky enough to attract some pretty high profile faculty here at Macaulay. So can you tell us a little bit about the class that you took with General David Petraeus? Um, that was, I guess, last th this past semester. And what what did you do in that class? What did it mean to you as somebody who's, who's interested in the military as a career? 
Right, absolutely. So um, this semester, I'm in the current, currently in the class taught by uh, General Petraeus. It's really awesome. There's only 15 of us there. Uh, we all had to apply to get in. It was really competitive, and it's so you really got a group of top-notch students there. Um, what's really interesting is the theme of the class is all the revolution that's going on in the United States in different fields, whether it be uh, the energy revolution, life sciences revolution, um, all the and this kind of the. the nature of Macaulay where you have people with different interests coming together. You have some people who are experts at 3D printing and they're in the class. You have people who are really knowledgeable in uh, public policy that are in the class. So everybody gets to bounce the ideas off of one another, which is great. And then when you have uh, somebody like John Petraeus, who's really so knowledgeable and gets to bring real life experience to the classroom, it's just absolutely amazing. And he gets to, he'll walk through you with, he actually hand grades your essays by hand, walks through every slide of your PowerPoint presentations for projects that you present with you, and you really grow you don't, you don't just learn more about the stuff in the class, but these great skills that are going to carry on with you throughout your career um, that are really valuable, and it's the most amazing experience I've ever had so far. Wow, that's great. Um, and just lastly, what are you planning to do with your Opportunities Fund? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So right now I'm also studying Arabic, and I plan on possibly next summer going to an Arabic-speaking country and using my Opportunities Fund to help pay for that. And I don't think that's something I'd be able to afford to do if it wasn't for the Opportunities Fund, so it's a great experience. So Hosea... Uh, speaking about study abroad, tell me about your experience in Dominican Republic and how that helped to shape what you want to do with your career. Sure. Um, so I went to the Dominican Republic for the winter intercession this past January. And what we learned there was public policy with regards to water. And why I actually wanted to go to this um, study abroad program in the first place was because I was previously involved in a science lab, as we mentioned earlier. Um, this was a science uh, project with UNICEF, actually. And this uh, laboratory f sought to solve the issue of water purification. And so for these three weeks, we learned a lot about public policy. We learned a lot about uh, water and the issues that were, the underlying issues that were present in the Dominican Republic. One thing that I found really, really interesting was being able to get uh, to go into the communities to uh, meet the people there and to ask them questions about where they got their water from and what they thought their water source um, would be used for, such as for washing, for cleaning. So maybe it, it, it would be safe to say that you're kind of uh, finally seeing some of the laboratory work that you've been doing in action in the field. Yeah, correct. I just want to thank you all for being here and uh, we're going to have another short break and we're going to hear a video message from Macaulay's Dean of Technology, Joe Ugaretz. I'm Joe Ugaretz, Associate Dean of Teaching, Learning, and Technology here at Macaulay Honors College, and I'd like to congratulate all of you on your acceptance to Macaulay. What technology allows students to do is to join a larger conversation, to be a part of the whole world of, of discourse, of information, and of knowledge. For example, we had a student last year who worked on a site exploring a, a play, a broad, an off-Broadway show that he had attended. Now, because he was able to post his thoughts, to post photographs, to post ideas of where the play fit into his own life, he was approached by the playwright, uh, who offered him free tickets and a chance to meet and discuss the work. We've had students create what are called pod walks, a walking tour of the Brooklyn Bridge Park that was used by the Parks Department as a way for uh, future guests to the park to enjoy the actual history and the context and architecture of what they were seeing. Our ePortfolios are another exciting initiative here at Macaulay for students. Uh, the ePortfolio or electronic portfolio is something that we like to look at as the museum of me. It's a place, an electronic place, where the student can gather together all the evidence of her learning throughout her time at Macaulay and beyond. Class activities. She can include video of experiences in the field or studying abroad. These ePortfolios then become a, a, a display piece so that they can show to future employers, to graduate school admissions committees, to faculty, uh, to anyone who might be interested, what it means to be a Macaulay student and what it means to be a college student and a learner. In all the classes and in, in all our projects, we're looking to have students engage with the outside of the classroom, engage with the world that exists outside the walls of the university, because that's where real learning takes place. Most of the time where students learn the most happens not just sitting in a room, but out in the world. And that's something we want to acknowledge and celebrate and make use of in your education at Macaulay. Welcome back. Our next group of student panelists, 
Maxime Bakalenik graduated from Baruch College in 2010. He is currently Assistant Vice President with Citigroup. Caitlin O'Hagan is a recent graduate from Hunter College. Since graduating, she's worked at the Hunter College Roosevelt House, a public policy organization, and in the lobbying department of a law firm since October. Medina Mishieva is a sophomore at Brooklyn College, majoring in psychology and minoring in biochemistry. She hails from, in her words, the lesser known country of Azerbaijan. She has her sights set on becoming a pediatrician working in neonatal care and currently volunteers at New York Methodist Hospital. Raj Basik is a junior studying physics and mathematics at City College. Born in India and raised in the United Arab Emirates, he now lives in Manhattan. In addition to his academic pursuits, he is a performer and singer and founder of the Macaulay Triplets a cappella group. After graduation, he plans to pursue a PhD in physics. So, Max, tell me a little bit, and uh, our audience here, what were the advantages that you found in an experience of, of attending a small program like Macaulay versus you know, a larger school? Sure. Well, I knew I wanted to go get my education in a big city, but at the same time, when you look at a lot of these major universities, it's thousands upon thousands of kids. And to get the kind of mentorship and direction to focus you in a specific direction, and I knew I wanted to study finance right away, the advantage was that there was always an open door I can go to. And at Baruch, there was no line or sign up list. I could just walk into my, excuse me, into my advisor's office. And if she didn't have the answer, she could point me to a professor who did. And a couple of times they even found someone for me to speak to. So and, and, and in, in that same regard, you know, having that personal connection, tell me the story of how you got your first internship in school. Sure. Uh, after my freshman year, I was doing telemarketing. I was very miserable. And <laughs> at the same time, I had made a connection through the uh, Macaulay Honors College uh, government panel. Uh, one of the people on that panel was Rory Picker, who told me she had a uh, position at the United Nations where she was working, and um, she introduced me to her bosses, and eventually I, st I started there as an associate doing a uh, grant work as a volunteer, and then when Rory transi transitioned on to her next opportunity, she bumped me forward, and she made me coordinator of finances at this uh, at the United Sta uh, States branch of Religions for Peace USA. And I don't think I would have even gotten into corporate finance if I didn't have that on my resume. So Max, as a finance guy, you under understand uh, sort of a cost benefit analysis, right? So tell me a little bit about how Macaulay allowed you financial freedom to make some really important life decisions since you graduated. Sure. Uh, well, one of my big things uh, I wanted to get out of my college education was the opportunity to finally move out of my parents' apartment. <laughs> uh, Baruch was a commuter school. They were really, like I lived at home all four years while I was on campus, so that was a big one for me. And uh, because I didn't have the loans, essentially I bought an apartment. My first apartment right out of college, I was able to buy a co-op and pretty much not just get space but it's you know get ownership i became a property owner and my friends always joke that i took on the mortgage to kind of set us equal with their college loans <laughs> make everyone play fair <laughs> that's great no i I'm, I'm actually i'm in the same situation myself but you know myself and my wife we wouldn't have been able to afford the apartment if we had those kinds of loans so it's right. a great point um caitlin so i wanted to ask you tell me a little bit about how going to Hunter sort of exposed you to different kinds of ideas and, and maybe challenged or caused you to refocus your, your values? Sure. So I remember when I was sitting in your shoes, one of the big things college push was diversity. And all colleges said, oh, we have such a diverse student body and it's so great. And it didn't really click in my head why that was so great or why that was so important. And then I came to Hunter and I had classes with an incredibly diverse student body. I'm not just talking about race and ethnicity, but also we have veterans, we have older students, we have students from just such varied backgrounds, and that has such an impact on your educational experience. Those people sitting around 
in the classroom with you. So, you know, I had a creative writing class with a veteran who wrote stories about her experiences in Iraq and Afghanistan, and that's incredibly moving. And also, at the same time, Hunter was founding the Roosevelt House Public Policy Institute, where they had a public policy program. And so I really became interested in issues of public policy and issues of diversity in education because of my experiences at Hunter. You dorm at, you dormed at Hunter? I did, yes. So tell us a little bit about the dorms at Hunter and sort of that dorm life, you know, because I think we'll have some people applying to Hunter who might be interested in that. Yeah, so I think the dorm life is a great transition between your parents' house and um, renting or owning your first apartment because you do get to live on your own. You have to learn how to cook and do your own laundry if you don't already know how to do that. Uh, but you do have the security of being on a college campus and a sort of built-in social life with the people who live around you. And so that was really important to me. It was that uh, even though I was going to this really big commuter school where it could have been really scary to like start new and make all these new friends, I actually had a place where I could uh, call home in a true sense of the word. And then just a Briefly, tell us a little bit about traveling to Australia and studying in, in Geelong, sure. Australia. Yeah. Sure. So I was one of those kids who thought I would never study abroad. I was like New York City girl, born and raised. I don't have any interest in any other places. Uh, and also was worried about the financial burden of doing a study abroad. And then I came to Hunter and my advisor immediately encouraged me to consider it. And I was taking German as my foreign language. So I ended up doing the German study abroad my f summer after my freshman year. Uh, completely financed through the Opportunities Fund, and it really changed my life, changed my view of travel, gave me this newfound sense of confidence. Uh, I also went to Australia, as you said. Uh, it was summer in January, it was great. My campus was on the beach, and I got to learn about Australian history and culture, which is not something that is traditionally offered at you know, a college campus here in the US, so. Um, excellent, so Medina, welcome, thank you. Um, one of the things that we were going to be talking about and we have been talking about is advisement at Macaulay and that kind of personal touch. So tell us about your relationship with your Honors College advisor and how did that shape your college experience so far? Yeah, so um, my advisor I've been very fortunate in having. Um, every time that I've had an issue or like any like academic issue that I had to face, she was there, her door was always open. One time I had strep throat and my fever was over 100 and she brought me in and she gave me a cup of tea and calmed me down and told me to go home. So like, it's that kind of personal touch and she knows me as what I want to do and my future and it's great to have. How does it, how does it work exactly, having an advisor that's a Macaulay advisor and yet you're sort of in this larger pool at your campus, how do they help guide you through you know, uh, your education at Brooklyn College? So every time that we have to pick classes, at least for the freshman year, we had to discuss it with our advisor. And that's always important to have because they know so much better if you're trying to take on too much at a time. And they can always calm you down if you're worried about certain classes. Like every freshman was worried, at least in the pre-med track, about whether or not they could handle both biology and chemistry at the same time. And advisors have seen students go through this and they've guided them along that already. And they make people comfortable with what they're going to take. And I feel like just having an advisor there gives you that extra benefit even when you're picking classes. And how, how do you, you know, I, I know that you see yourself in the future being in the medical profession. How do you feel that Macaulay can help you kind of connect the dots between entering school, doing that pre-med track, getting you to medical school, and then maybe connecting you to people who have taken that same path through Macaulay that you, that you want to be walking? So actually, our advisors are pretty aware of the opportunities that are going on, especially in the pre-med field. So they actually told me about volunteering at Methodist Hospital. They made sure I knew who to contact. Um, they basically have a greater view of the things that you need to do to get to the point where you want to be in your life. And if I didn't have her, I wouldn't be volunteering at the hospital right now. I wouldn't be as prepared. I wouldn't have as much clinical experience as I do at this point, and it's great. So Raj. Um First of all, tell me a little bit about the Hertog Scholars Program. This is one of our almost additional uh, tracks that you can take to kind of challenge yourself even more uh, at Macaulay. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure, sure. So uh, as a science student at City College of New York, uh, there are a number of requirements that need to be fulfilled um, by your junior year. And 
this can be a, you know, a number of classes from three to like 10 classes depending on your major. And as a physics and math student, I lacked the opportunity to take classes in the humanities, something I was very interested in. So the Hertog Scholars Program is a program uh, offered to Macaulay students to all of all the campuses, uh, and it's offered to a cohort of 20 students each year through an application, which uh, guides them through a series of six seminars that are focused on literature, philosophy, American philosophy and culture, and political economy. And, uh, you know, again, on the subject of clubs and sort of extracurriculars, tell us about the Macaulay Triplets and um, where do you perform? What is, what is this group? What is this singing group uh, all about? Sure. So for all the musicians and singers out there, I'm sure you're aware that uh, a cappella or, or collegiate a cappella, just like pentatonics, is a really big thing uh, through universities all across uh, the country. And the a cappella group of Macaulay is called the Macaulay Triplets, uh, which has anywhere from uh, 13 to 15 students at any given time spread all across the uh, 78 campuses. And we meet here at the Macaulay Building twice a week and rehearse. Uh, in our, during our tenure, we've, we've performed uh, all over the Northeast. We performed in Boston, Philadelphia, Binghamton, uh, DC. Uh, and recently, we were just featured on the quarterfinal of the International Championship of Collegiate Acapella, where for the second year in a row, we brought home an award. Um, again, the, the Macaulay Triplets are uh, a very tight-knit group where people join not only to sing and, and make music, but they also join to meet people and, and to make a lot of friends. Um, and just like the Macaulay Dancers and the variety of, of other um, student clubs on campus, like the Macaulay Improv Group, uh, um, the Macaulay Movie Club, the Macaulay Gastronomy Club, the Triplets are sort of a place to a sort of a place to pursue your interest while meeting people and making your, your college experience not just an academic one, but a personal one. So the Macaulay Triplets are one of my, my most, in, one of my favorite hobbies on campus. So. And just to clarify, it's more than three people. Oh, yes, yes. Initially, it was intended to be a trio, but seeing the amount of interest and in a number of singers and musicians in Macaulay, it quickly grew to be something much greater than a triplet. That's great. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, with that, we're going to take another short break, and we have a video message for you from our provost, Mary Pearl, about academics at Macaulay. Hi, I'm Mary Pearl, and I'm the provost here at Macaulay, which means that I um, supervise the academic and student activities uh, that all of you will uh, take part in. We have a ratio of about 1 to 40, one student to um, one advisor to 40 students, which means that no matter what you want to pursue, we have people who can provide the support you need to get where you want to go. Uh, we also have some fantastic seminars uh, just for Macaulay students. The Science in the City program is uh, a really exciting one where you learn all about ways of scientific thinking and the kickoff event is a bio blitz, which is a 24-hour period uh, in which you and uh, scientists and some of the best naturalists in the city will be helping you count every plant and animal species in one of the parks of, of New York. Every uh, one of our students has the uh, funding uh, in place to go abroad or take an internship. Um, and we have some special trips uh, planned as well that are tied to the curriculum where you can be earning credit as well as traveling on an intellectual and um, experiential journey uh, that uh, you'll remember the rest of your life. The Macaulay New Media Lab, uh, you can join a network of, of people really interested in trans platform communication, storytelling, animation, um, social media, all the new ways we communicate. Not only um, do you get to work on your own projects, we uh, help you pitch them to all the media companies in our neighborhood, um, from WNET to WABC to many of the uh, online channels. If you have any more questions about Macaulay, I'd be delighted to answer. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the fall. At this point, I'd like to address some of the most frequently asked questions about Macaulay. How do I apply for the Opportunities Fund? Freshmen may begin to apply for funding during the spring of their freshman year. They may begin to access the funding during the summer between the freshman and sophomore years. When do I have to make a commitment to attend Macaulay? The deadline is May 1st. How do I find out about on-campus housing? Students interested in campus housing should contact their home campus and check the websites. Macaulay's central administration does not place students for housing. 
What if I have a change of heart and want to change my major to one that is not offered at the campus where I was accepted? Can I transfer? While transfers between Macaulay campuses are discouraged, Macaulay students are welcome to take courses on any CUNY campus, including graduate courses at the CUNY Graduate Center. Many Macaulay students enroll in cross-campus and graduate courses. So, to sum up, you've had the opportunity to hear about all that Macaulay has to offer. From the academic experience, to internships and study abroad, to what some of our graduates have been up to, we truly hope that you found this information session useful and of course hope that you will choose Macaulay for college. If you do, you'll be joining a cohort of students who are passionate about their education, the diversity of New York City, and their opportunity to shape the future as Macaulay graduates. If you're the type of scrappy student who looks towards college as a great adventure, then Macaulay is perfect for you. Before we leave you, I just wanted to thank all the people who made this presentation possible. Marianne, Luke, and Charmaine in enrollment here at Macaulay, Michael and the entire IT staff, Dean Kirshner and Provost Mary Pearl, Associate Dean Joe Ugretz, Ambassadors and alumni chatting with you on Facebook, Mila, a Macaulay graduate and our associate producer, Herman on the teleprompter, Ali Kamara, our cameraman, all of our student presenters, and of course, our audience who joined us today. Thanks all, and we hope to see you in September.